Hey, Zach. What's going on, brother? Hey, what's up, man? It's good to see you, man. What's good uh, to see you. What's been the latest with you? Where Where are you calling from? Let's start there. I am in Texas right now. So I'm in Fort Worth and I'm working for uh, Lily. What's been going on with you? Not much, man. Just been working on this show. And uh, you pop into mind because of uh, our experience together at Carmel, uh, getting to win yes. two state championships, as well as uh, your time with Indiana basketball, which we're going to get into. But let's start out uh, in your childhood, man, because I know basketball has been part of your experience since the beginning. What, uh, Absolutely. <laughs> what are some of your earliest memories as a basketball player? Man, it's. I feel like it's easier to think of memories. I don't. I. I don't know. I've, I've always been in a gym for my brother, my dad, playing growing up in semi pro leagues, just like playing around where we grew up. And then my brother, obviously, starting from a very young age. I have little memories without basketball involved. So I think, like from the time I was three, I was playing, or at least had a ball in my hand somewhere, trying to dribble <laughs> it, and then playing playing in the basement with my brother. But yeah, it's always been just a huge part of my life. And then. Um, obviously getting to grow up in Carmel, be a part of that, that program and play in high school and then eventually end up at Indiana. It was kind of a, a yeah. fun story. Um, and it was a good time. Yeah. And remind me again, uh, your parents come from an athletic background too. Yes. Yeah. So my dad played at Butler and my I played basketball at Butler. My mom played volleyball at Butler. So, <laughs> and I, my uh, grandpa on my mom's side played basketball at Butler as well. So we kind of had a long, a long Butler history before they were, you know, making making championship games and everything like that. We we grow up going to games, and it was nice. It was so close, pretty easy to get to. I'd like to think that your parents would want you to do whatever makes you happy, but uh, did part of them want you to play sports and be involved? <laughs> um, I, they never really pressured me to play. It was kind of just what I always saw. Either it was my brother, or my sister played volleyball. Um, I was just kind of around always athletics. So it was just something I was kind of, I was more naturally drawn to than really forced. Uh -huh. um, but I, I think they would have been happy regardless what I, what I chose, but I think they're pretty happy with the way things ended up as well. So it's a win-win. Well, and uh, your brother, Josh, ended up playing, uh, I read 11 seasons for seven teams. Uh, yes. And ended up at Duke. But I'm asking just because of the Butler lineage, was there any pressure to be a Bulldog? Uh, for me or for him? Uh, both. <laughs> sure. Okay. Not, not, not much of him. I think he was – that was before they were, you know, like I said, making championship games. I think they were still in the Horizon League. So, he was probably a little bit uh, – I think he was – I couldn't tell you the top national player of the year or something. I think he won it with the McDonald's All-American game. He was player of the game or something. But yeah, probably a little bit uh, below what he was looking at. But um, – and then once I – got to that age they were probably a little bit above what i was doing coming out of high school so there really wasn't too much too much pressure um it, it could have been cool but kind of keep that tradition going but i'd, yeah. I'd say it worked out well and, and you know me my my family i grew up with joey brunk and my family yes and, uh you know one thing that i joke with johnny about his younger brother is like you're not intimidated by anybody when your older yeah. brother is a basketball player and you have to play with them um right how, how did having josh around make you a better player growing up I, I mean it's always it's always good to have a workout partner with that much experience just even going through like in the summer we would be working out just taking me through certain drills what they're doing in the nba like not a lot of guys have access to resources like that or somebody who could help work them out that have been with the best coaches or some of the best strength coaches what whatever it is he's just he's been able to see a lot and learn a lot and he's been able to take what he did kind of refine it to kind of suit me a little bit better and then help me out with my game. And as far as mentally, I think it's also good to have a resource like that that's gone through it, played at a high level, even higher level, obviously, but just to kind of have somebody to talk to, slow things down, because it can it can move fast. It's a high pressure season as well. So it was, it was good just to have kind of a, a sounding board, either, you know, here's what I'm going through, or we got this game coming up, what are you thinking? Or just workout wise, just in the off season too, just kind of always having a partner there to uh, kind of push you, help you, make you better. So, I mean, it couldn't couldn't have been better. Did you get a chance to meet Coach K? Um, yes, it would have been a long time ago, probably when I was in like fourth or fifth grade, I think, like visiting and then going to see games at Duke, um, getting to meet him briefly, and then probably just playing at IU. Just we played Duke one year and then at Duke the other year. So just a brief, brief handshake, but that was about it. We didn't have too much interaction with him. <laughs> well, and – it's just hard to think of it because you grow up in the local area, but 
go back to when Josh was playing at Carmel and to give people context, like he was ready to be a lottery pick out of Carmel high school. Right. They, right. They, yeah. they, they were projecting him to be that. Right. And I, I'm sure it ended up the way that he wanted to. I'm just saying, does any part of him wonder, man, maybe I should have just gone straight to the NBA. Cause you can't even do that anymore. Right. Yeah. I, I don't know. I haven't talked to him much about the decision. I think it has, I mean, yeah. Being able to play for 11 years, I'd say it worked out and we can always do the what if, but I think, I think it, it, it worked out and he was able to have a long career in, in the NBA. So yeah. I think he's probably happy with his decisions. And I'd say, I don't know. Part of you, I would imagine too, when he played for the Pacers, like that was ideal for the family, right? Yeah. Getting to play for the home team. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. I think I was in seventh or eighth grade. I couldn't tell you exactly what ha- when it was, but yeah, that was, that was very cool. Um, getting to go to a lot of the games. I wouldn't say every game because I was kind of in the middle of the season too. So if we had a game that day, obviously I couldn't make it. But um, yeah, I mean, that was awesome. He, he lived about 10 minutes away from me. So just getting to see him, just have a, a nor- seemed like a normal big brother. He was just going off, you know, maybe a business trip, but it was a West Coast road trip in the NBA. But right. uh, it, was, it was a pretty cool experience. Well, and something that's different now, uh, even from the time that you played, is you have the NIL money coming in with colleges. Um, how do you think that changes things from a recruiting standpoint? And I feel like it would create jealousy if you've got one player that's just raking in cash. You know what I mean? Yeah, I I think there is the jealousy aspect to it, but also you're kind of, it's not like you're getting paid for playing necessarily. I think it's just totally interesting. It's kind of like the wild west right now. I feel like where you, I mean, these companies or whatever their, their, their endorsements, you're kind of, they're assigning you the value versus, um, you're kind of yeah it's 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 just it's totally crazy i think it we see it now in the tournament kind of the parody we got the one seed losing obviously fdu probably didn't have the biggest nil money coming in but i think just um throughout the tournament you're just going to see more and more people kind of evolving adapting coaches leaving uh, there's going to be a lot of turnaround i feel like so it'll be it'll be interesting to see what changes what happens in the next five ten years how it kind of develops because i think it's all just so new right now that I mean, it's awesome for the players because it's not like you're getting paid to play necessarily, but you are getting paid for some of the recognition you're you're creating, jersey sales, t-shirt, t-shirts. So I think I think it's an awesome real change, giving people a good opportunity to make some money, and then if they're if they're good enough, obviously they can make it make it to the next level. But I think it's a great opportunity for some of the guys who might not have a elusive or a, right. a awesome pro career coming up. It kind of gives the incentive to stay around for a little bit longer, where you can make a pretty good amount of money in college. And then that as well kind of gives us what we're used to back in the day where we have guys staying for four years, you get used to the names where the one and done it's kind of, you see these big programs, you just have freshmen go to the draft, freshmen go to the draft where it's, it's, I feel like that might change a little bit. Well, and I think social media has changed (laughs) recruiting too. And like, it's sort of very much about image and how the player appears do you think there's as much of lore about a place like Indiana that has the banners, has the history, or or is it really more about getting to a place that can get me to the professional level at this stage? I think it's going to depend on the play, like individual players. I think some right. people will respect that history, especially if you are from Indiana. You're obviously going to respect what the university's done. They've obviously been a powerhouse in the five five championships. That's always a positive. So it's it's going to be kind of a give and take between okay I can either go here play for a year and get to the NBA or make a lot of NIL money for four years whatever it is versus uh, if you want to just play for that brand and I'm not saying Indiana's not doing a good job taking care of guys or they're not interested in the NIL or getting them to the NBA but uh, it's just kind of where where they're heads at individually because it's it's going to really depend on the player and what the what Indiana means to them versus any other school they can go to kind of weighing that with recruiting and I think I think their staff has been really great as we've seen the past couple of years. And Brian Walsh, who was uh, director of basketball operations, I think while I was there, I don't know, I don't want to get that title wrong, but now he's a, a, an assistant. So it's been awesome to see him kind of work his way up and be a full-time assistant. And he's doing a really great job as well. So I know he's he's big with recruiting and he's doing a good job. So I don't know, I don't know why you wouldn't want to go to Indiana. Um, I, I do want to go back to uh, Carmel for a minute because when whenever you play at a school where your brother played was there sort of a 
understanding of oh i'm i'm josh's brother like it was, it was hard to establish your own presence be, because of Not, josh <laughs> i wouldn't say it was too bad because we had all new coaches um none of the coaches were there that were around when josh was around so it was kind of like a, a total fresh switch up um because yeah i would say yeah, I think it's pretty easy to kind of make my own name for myself, work hard. I think I played JV my freshman year, so it's not like I was coming in getting any special treatment or anything like that. I kind of started started uh, started on yeah. JV and tried to practice as hard as I could, get prepared for the next season my sophomore year and be able to play varsity. And it's obviously the, the very high level of basketball playing what in the MIC. Uh, yeah. No longer in the MIC, but that was, I mean, you had no easy games, so you always got to be ready. And it doesn't really, we, it's not like we even have names on the back of our jersey. So <laughs> it's not going to do you much good out there for 32 minutes. Um, how did Coach Hetty get the team to buy in? I, I, I mean, I got to tell you, watching the those two back-to-back years, it was like a well-oiled machine both, yeah. both years. Uh, how does a coach get a team to buy in like that? It's interesting. I think you, it requires a lot of trust in the coaches and what they're doing, but – I think our, his first year there, we didn't win many games. And then we kind of had a whole, I think, I don't know. I couldn't tell you how many seniors like, we lost, but it was kind of a fresh start that new year. Uh, it would have been 20, 2011, 2012 season. And yeah, we were just kind of bought in. We we played well over the summer, like leading up into that season, just kind of getting more comfortable with, with each other's games, kind of meshing a little bit. And then you see it working in the summer. You see all the work you're doing in the off season, you're thinking, I mean, maybe we have a chance. And he is, his yeah. big thing was if you get out of the sectional, you can, be, you can win the state championship. So obviously you're going to take it one game at a time, but we got to, I think we had the top three teams in our sectional. Right. Uh, HSC took out North central, I think that first game. And then yeah. uh, we got them on that in that championship. So that was, that was a fun experience, but yeah, just kind of believing in what you're doing and you'll see that success throughout the year, winning and winning and stacking wins on top of each other. And then I think for that next year, that 2012, 2013 season, you, that's a, even easier because you're like, okay, this is what we did last year. Got us a state championship. We're just going to continue that momentum, keep it going. We can, I mean, what he's saying is working. So we're going to trust him and yeah. let him coach and we'll play. What's the better team, brother? 2012 or 2013? I don't know. There, I bet it was interesting. I couldn't tell you the record of either of them, but I think 20, 2012 was interesting just because we hadn't won a state championship since 1977. I think right. so. It's something, and especially when you got such a good sectional, we didn't. It's not like we were impressing people every night. We might have lost seven, six to eight games. I can't tell you how crazy the season was. So. I don't think people really expected it. So even to get out of that sectional, I was like, wow, we really did something special. And then yeah. it continued on to the state championship where I can't beat that. But I think that was, that was fun because of the, the newness of it. And then the 2013 team, I feel like everybody kind of stepped into their roles perfectly. We got had, had guys had to do more losing those seniors um, that did so much for us. So, I mean, it was just, it was a great, great experience. I couldn't ask for a better one. Maybe a uh, state championship my senior year, but, you know, yeah. I'll get over it. <laughs> well, and uh, Grant Goodman, everybody forgets about yeah. Grant, but like him coming back. Yeah, unsung hero. He, he, we needed that post presence and my God, he, he served that role. You know, thinking back to the state championship, and, well, and the, and the run leading up to it, uh, who were some of the toughest matchups that you had? Because there were some, there was some NBA talent that came out of that sectional. Yeah, HSC was definitely – that's probably the biggest one because you had uh, Bledsoe, a point guard. He was he was good. Zach Irvin obviously played at Michigan and then Gary Harris. So, I mean, that's a pretty yeah. stacked lineup. Uh, not a lot of people were probably picking us to win. If they took an alternate spread plus 20, they probably could have made some money. But I don't know the lines on high school games. But, uh, <laughs> I mean, that was just uh, – that was an awesome experience, just playing that Noblesville gym, having it full – you got you're there that Tuesday night before everybody's chanting we hate Carmel so it's just you know it's always good to win in front of good crowds like that yeah well and I feel like this would have been uh, something you had to deal with like was there ever peer pressure with winning and there was certainly plenty of money around were there outside influences that you had to step away from like drinking and or anything like that uh, not really. I feel like I had a pretty good group of friends, good group of friends on the go- like on the team, even that we were, we, we stayed out of trouble. We knew kind of to stay out of trouble because uh, that wouldn't, wouldn't reflect well on us, wouldn't reflect well on the team. So I would say surprisingly, 
not even surprisingly. I'll, I'll give everybody more credit <laughs> than that. But I feel like we did a pretty good job staying out of trouble and uh, uh, get, not being too bad. Did it, was Hetty a disciplinarian? Like, what what was something that he held people to account for? Um, yeah, I think one of the first – it was maybe one of the first preseason workouts in September. We had an optional open gym um, that not enough people showed up to. I know I had, like, an uh, AP test the next day. I was trying to hit the books. And uh, he text, he was texting everybody, like, where's everybody at? And then that next morning, we had a 6 a.m. workout. He takes us, shows us all the state championships up on the wall, gives us some speech about how we're not doing enough to be one of those teams. And uh, we run for about an hour and a half straight. No balls even out at the workout. Just kind of setting the tone for the season. Like, nobody's really wanting it bad enough. Nobody's even trying enough to uh, get in here for an open gym after school when we have the courts open. So I think that was that was a big way of call to everybody that all right we're not going to be coasting or we yeah. we can't get away with not even coming to optional stuff. So I I even still I'll show up to work stuff that's optional just because of that. I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> well, and I would imagine playing for a guy like Hetty, it made playing college basketball pretty easy, right? It, yeah, it's very similar. I think the program runs very similar. The pre the preseason, the off season, the morning workouts, all that it kind of gives you a good a good. Uh, entry to college i think our college is always going to be a different world with the, the speed the skill everything that those guys have up there and it is kind of like a job now especially even with all the money that they're getting with nil but it's getting, yeah i mean it, he is i mean he is a college coach and he ran it kind of like a college <laughs> program almost with just the way he would like structure practice he would yeah. make sure like in the spring because we'd been doing so much for six months after school we'd have morning workouts so we can get home or whatever we had guys had to work they could get jobs so I mean, he was pretty aware of that, that it still was high school, but I think he ran it as professionally as he possibly could, and the kind of results speak for himself. And I know Coach Osborne has taken a lot from what Coach Hetty was doing, made it his own, and mm -hmm. continued to run it very well, very successfully. What was a play that would always get you excited in games? Man, I couldn't even tell you. I can't remember any plays. <laughs> well, I, I remember, I, dude, you were one of the few people that had some balance and could uh, dunk it. yeah. I, I think I did. I think Ryan Klein threw me an alley oop. I think my senior year, and we would always get one going in open gym. People would just fall asleep. You get a back door from the right side. That was the only side I could jump from was that right block. So we'd just <laughs> catch somebody sleeping, yeah. uh, get a lob going. I think I only caught like one or two within the, like actually in games. But dunks were always cool. No, but I mean the kids are crazy now. Nobody, kids are I'm dunking everything. I can, I wouldn't be able to keep up with them now. Now, <laughs> but. Uh, I think one a game, I think like my senior year or something, if I, you average it out, don't check the tape, but uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, those are always fun blocks. I mean, I can still, still remember like Mike Volvic's big three against uh, Noblesville at home yep. on my junior year, his senior year to win us the game. So it's just like things like that. You still think about it. You're like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. That well, was, I mean, and just an awesome experience. I, I'm, I remember this play, the uh, game winner against North Central where you got the rebound Yes. Out, outlet to Mike and then game winner. D done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was awesome. That was, <laughs> that was a lot of fun. Um, and I would be remiss if I didn't mention Michael Volvic uh, with the offense that y'all ran. God, how important is the point guard in Hetty's system? He, I mean, he was huge. You could, he was just a little, I, I couldn't, I don't even know how to describe him. He would just go up there, just throw something off the backboard, somehow land like five feet away from the basket and go in. <laughs> he would just talk about how sore he was the next day. Uh, he was just getting tossed around, just jumping into people. Uh, but I mean, yeah, he was, yeah. he was awesome. He was one of my favorite guards to play with, I'd say. Um, I mean, he was good at moving the ball. He could hit, obviously hit big shots when he needed to. He was just had that switch. Um, yeah. uh, and he, I mean, he ran the offense, could run the team. So he was just an awesome guy to play with. Well, and you started your college career at Vermont. Um, mm -hmm. Man, that's, and I, you could talk about uh, the next step, but I, that's a long ways away from Indiana. Is that How much of an adjustment should, was that? <laughs> uh, that was, yeah, that's about a 15, 16 hour drive. That was a pretty big adjustment. We had some guys from the Midwest go out there that were in my class too. So we were going through some of the same things, just being, being far. And I mean, it's a, it's a pretty big change going out there. Like you said, like you think mm -hmm. your system will get you ready for college, but it's still everything's brand new. You're not used to the play calls. You're not used to the weight room or how everything's structured. So it's just, it's an adjustment, um, getting used to a new school, new, new coaches, new people. 
um, trying to trying to fit in also trying to, I mean, it's your first year out on your own. You're trying to navigate college as well. So yeah. there's, there's just a lot going on. Well, and uh, you, you eventually left Vermont and went to Indiana. And I find this interesting. Uh, just spent a year as a regular student, right? Um, yes. I mean, I feel like you you probably felt like you had too much time on your hands as a regular student. Yeah, that was, uh, it was an interesting <laughs> transition. Um, that summer, I didn't really know what to do with myself. And then at, during the school year, I was taking just a normal amount of classes and kind of found, my, found myself having, like you said, a little bit too much time because it was yeah. totally new. Even in high school, I didn't have that much time. And you're in class all day going to practice or off season workouts or AAU stuff. It's just, it was a, it was a new world. And then, uh, eventually kind of towards the end of the year I was like I, I don't really want to spend the rest of my college like this I want to kind of explore other options try to get playing basketball again and then um, was able to get in contact with IU coaches and kind of have a what they told me was not an official workout I think it was uh, but it was like an 80 minute workout right. made made the team officially and then kind of I think I might have had a week back home and then came back right after school ended just to try to I mean I hadn't worked out barely any for a year but I mean I was playing some basketball didn't really lift that much so I had four weeks by myself at IU before the rest of the guys came back to try to get in some some amount of shape and that involved a lot of throwing up but uh, I was trying to uh, <laughs> get in shape kind of get it all together and uh, be ready for when everybody came back to not totally embarrass myself being out so, of shape. Well and I only ask this because when you're from Carmel you you get the eye roll of oh he's from Carmel and I would imagine too, with your brother playing in the NBA, was there ever resentment from anyone on the team or another walk on? Because I mean, you came from a good program, and you know right. it allowed you to walk onto the team as a student. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say any of that. I feel like everybody was pretty welcoming, and everybody's. I couldn't think. I know Johnny Jagger was from. Uh, he went to Bloomington South. Yes, and he was one of my best friends. I actually re roomed with him. Uh, lived with him my senior year my last year there so I don't I think it nobody really cared it was cool they thought it was cool a little bit like I just knew a bunch of different people because Carmel is a big pool I mean right. a lot of people from Carmel go to IU so I kind of yeah. had a bunch of different people I could hang out with so I had I had some uh different friends that they might not be hanging out with so it's was, it was cool just to experience a bunch of different things I could kind of almost be in college like a regular student just hanging out with my friends and I'm like oh yeah I got to go to practice and then play at assembly all so it's like it was <laughs> kind of two different worlds I was involved in where they I don't think totally knew what was going on well I would imagine too uh with AAU you you probably was some chemistry with a few guys just because you see them at different tournaments and stuff yeah yeah after you kind of come up playing playing with some of the guys I'm trying to think I don't know if we had anybody from Indiana I don't want to offend anybody who we had James Blackman I guess yeah so James Blackman was there my first year or two um yeah. so yeah I knew him from playing Indiana All-Stars a little bit of AAU but just kind of always being around uh kind of coming up together in the same same-ish scene I know he played on the Nike circuit I played on the Adidas so we didn't overlap much but I just we obviously knew each other so that was cool to see what's your read on Tom Crean He's a, he's, I mean, he's a good guy. I think to, for me to not be able to play, I didn't play for a year and then for him to kind of open it up and give me at least a chance and then kind of let me, uh, kind of prove myself to him. And then I didn't even know him. And then after that first workout where it was kind of the, the tryout, he sat down to talk to me for probably like an hour. So, I mean, he's, he's a great guy. Uh, is it was a good experience, but obviously did not work out. And I think that's just part of the pressure that comes with being at IU, playing at IU, coaching at IU is that people are expecting, you know, championships. So if you don't deliver that on a national level, I know they won some big 10 championships. I think it was two years before or a year before I got there. Um, but the expectation, I can think kind of what you sign up for when you coach at IU is like, people are expecting great things. They're expecting championships. They're, kind of repetitively too that you don't have much okay we won the big 10 championship last year let's give them some grace i just i, I don't think that's the way it goes at iu it's a high pressure that's a pressure cooker even uh with an alumni like woody coaching the team now to mm -hmm. me uh, indiana basketball felt bigger and more prominent when tom cream was there uh how similar or different was 
Crane to Archie Miller because you played under Archie once, Tom. Right. Crane. Yeah. Yeah. How explain that to me? I'm curious to hear uh, how it felt bigger. Well, that's interesting. Uh, I, to me, it felt bigger because you had Cody Zeller and Victor mm-hmm. Oladipo, and they were number one and projected to win the national championship during that stretch. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, you, you also beat Kentucky at Assembly Hall. I don't think they've had a signature moment since then. E- even, you know, like Rob Finnessy, who was known for hitting a couple of, of shots, ended up transferring out. So right. I, I guess the bigger question uh, that, we'll, that we'll get into is, like, how does Indiana basketball get to a point where the fans are satisfied? <laughs> I, yeah, that's – that's a good point. That's why I'm glad I asked the question because that was a good explanation. Yeah. But uh, as far as fan satisfaction, I think it's pretty, pretty simple. And that's just win. I know when I was there, we didn't win very much, but I mean, we still had good fans coming out to the games and yeah. trying to support us as well as they could. But I mean, we just weren't winning enough. I, we didn't make the tournament while I was there. So that's just not going to fly when you're playing at Indiana. So I think that the easiest way to keep people happy and uh, coach Woodson will be there forever if he just keeps mm-hmm. winning. I think if he keeps doing what he's doing, I know, you know the guys like to play for him. I think obviously coming from the NBA, going to college, you know what you're talking about. That's another, I mean, you can trust what he's saying. He's going to do the best for his players, get them. If they want to be at the next level or think he can, you can be at the next level, he's going to do everything he can to get you there. So uh, I think if he just keeps winning, obviously disappointing loss to Miami, but that's a tough tournament to win. So uh, I think it's, it shows some progress that we're, they were able to get there get a four seed, have a good season, uh, not even be on the bubble, which is always exciting to see and not watch selection Sunday with uh, just a lot of nerves going. So I think, right. I think they're heading in the right direction. Well, and uh, I'm a little worried about Indiana basketball, quite frankly, looking at the roster for next year. And, you know, the transfer portal is always there. Uh, it seems mm-hmm. to be something that's kind of preferred now. Uh, do you think that folks even want – the high school kid anymore because they can just get somebody that's used to the college game and knows how to behave themselves. Yeah, that is, that is true. I think there is something to be said about the transfer portal because it's even different. I couldn't tell you when the rule changed, but I don't think when I was in college, I mean, at least in the beginning, I don't think I could transfer. You would have to send out a year. So it's changed so much because yeah, like you said, you can get a guy that's played for two, three years. You see his stats. If he's maybe playing in the Big East, you're like, okay, this guy's doing this in the Big East. If we get him in the Big Ten, like, you know he can play at a high level. And then he's already used to the college game, where if you have freshmen coming in, it's a totally different game. Guys are stronger, bigger, faster than they were seeing in high school. You can do all you can to prepare for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and obviously guys can when they're the top 50 freshmen or whatever. But when they come in, it's kind of like a project and they, somebody to develop. It is kind of you got to weigh your options if you want to spend the time to develop this guy and kind of take a risk that you might transfer if he's not playing within the first year where you know that he probably shouldn't or can't because you have guys above them that were playing three, four years, especially with the COVID year being six year seniors, things like that. Like those okay. guys are just having a bunch of experience. So <laughs> it, it kind of depends on kind of where where the guys are at coming in from high school and where the transfer portal is leading you. So, I mean, there's just so many different options. But, yeah. I think my transfer portal is great. People are wanting to move around and let them, and then you can get some guys with experience. I think that – and then you have – I mean, when does that start? Then you start in June, kind of get ready. I don't know how much actual practicing you can do technically, but at least you have kind of the summer to implement your system or at least some of the drills you want to be doing that re- relate to your offense and try to get them used to the certain actions you're running. So, I don't know. It's pretty interesting. It'll be interesting to see who they pick up or how, how, the, how that goes. Do you have to be friends or have chemistry with your teammates in order for it to work on the court? I, yeah, I think so. Especially, I mean, we were friends at IU. We were all, I mean, we all got along well. I mean, hopefully, maybe even too well. I feel like we should have gotten into each other a little bit more. But, I mean, that was a, it was a great team to be a part of. I know some fans would like uh, us to win a little bit more. But, I mean, I'm still still talking to some of the people that I played with today. But even especially, like, Carmel, like, we would all just hang out, like, after practice or go, like, get some – in between like practice we'd go get some food or something then come back we had a game or something like we were always doing stuff together and we still are still friends today so I think that's gonna lead to a lot of success if you feel like you can trust people that you're playing with you can be able to kind of communicate like that even outside of the court that's only going to help you on the court so just be able to 
kind of be friends, hang out, talk a little bit to them uh, and let them know, you know, something's going wrong or not doing this well, but just being able to kind of call it even at the end of the day. You never got a chance to participate in the tournament, NCAA tournament? I did not, know. Got to play in some NITs, though. Okay, yeah. Exciting. I, I was wondering uh, <laughs> what, what the NIT experience is like for you. Uh, I, uh, not, I mean, it's a good tournament, I guess. It's obviously disappointing to be playing in it, but they do a good job with it. I think we played at Georgia Tech <laughs> my first year at IU, and then we played – we might have lost a home game – when, how many times did I play in the NIT? Did I play three times? I don't think I did. Yeah, I might have. I don't know. I I know we lost to Wichita State one year. I don't know. They could have just been black and gold. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> they got the well, sticker on the court. And it's, I mean, it's just an opportunity, especially my senior year. Sorry. Um, it's just an opportunity yeah. to keep playing. Um, and just, you're like, all right, I've got however many games, especially for a guy like me. I know I'm not going to play on after college. I've got at most four games left in my entire career, something I've been doing forever. So, I mean, I think it's a good opportunity for guys just to get out there. I think people have some differing views on it. Like you see Rutgers loses a one seed to the eight seed and they're thinking people are saying, oh, they, they got snubbed or whatever. Because, and then they have no argument because they lost in the, one, the first round. But, I mean, those guys didn't want to be playing in IT. They just had their hope, dreams crushed by not making the tournament when they clearly should have. So it's just kind of – you got some teams like the eight seed teams who won their – conference regular season that get to play in the NIT that's an awesome opportunity and then you got like the one seeds like Rutgers being snubs from the tournament and they're like ah, I don't want to be in the NIT yeah you know just things like that it just depends on the team you're on and how excited you are to be in the postseason but it was it was interesting something else that interests me uh, and you can get into this because I know that you have your 10,000 hours when it comes to basketball I mean you're certainly mm -hmm. a master when when it comes to the family and the high school program that you came from I mean how much of being a coach and running a college program is more about managing personalities I mean what is there an expectation once you get to college that you kind of should know how to play the game yeah I think so I mean there are things you can do work on individually obviously things you can control like getting extra shots up getting extra like I was mentioning earlier like just working off if you can work with the managers, just working off like certain actions, you're running on certain off screens. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of individual work that goes into it. Um, you will have some time that's set up like just for individual workouts, or at least I know we did at IU, maybe things have changed because there are some times where you can actually have like team practices almost, but it's pretty regulated how, what you're able to do. But yeah, I mean, I think a lot of it is kind of up to you and how much you want to improve your game because you're doing two hours of practice, but everybody else across the country is like how much extra work are you going to do or where are you going to be at at the end of the year versus the beginning of the year if you're just practicing the same or doing the same amount as everybody else kind of separate yourself there um but yeah i think a lot of it will be especially going forward i think money kind of changes the game where it's going to be managing those personalities being able to get five guys to play together play for for each other i think is always going to be a challenge or kind of depends on the makeup of the team hopefully you get lucky with some some good guys and build your team accordingly but I think it'll be it'll be interesting to see how different coaches are able to handle the different landscape and if they've been in college for a long time how they're able to kind of navigate through it versus some newer coaches I feel like may have may have a leg up just in terms of being able to adapt to the NIL and what that's doing how it's attracting players how it's going to help with recruiting and just being able to kind of give players a pitch from there and We'll see. I'm, I'm excited. I, I don't know the exact number. I want to say four. The, the Joey played under four different head coaches. <laughs> but how difficult <laughs> as she walks <laughs> across. Coming through here. Uh, <laughs> that's fine. Um, how difficult is it to play for a coach that didn't recruit you? I feel like that would be difficult. Yeah, it, it, it is interesting. They don't really know what they're getting themselves into, especially as a walk-on. Uh, you just yeah. – you, they don't really know what to expect. I was, I came in there with really no expectations. I just knew I wanted to be a part of the team. I wanted to have basketball back a part of what I was doing kind of day to day and right. just really be a part of the team again. But to kind of carve my role out and kind of get that confidence, it kind of takes some time to kind of get the confidence from those coaches. Like I think 
it was right. cool. Coach Crane started me in my first exhibition game, not in first regular season game, but just to <laughs> kind of prove prove to me that I was able to be out there. Just kind of try to give me some confidence to to be there. So I think I mean he was he was very very good or as good as he could be to me. Uh, yeah, not not recruiting me, just kind of me showing up on his doorstep. I think he did he did a good job, and I think he treated me just as he would any other player, trying to develop me, trying to give me confidence, trying to tell me to go make plays and just be who I can be. So, I mean, I think I think it was good. Well, and you were a uh, team captain along with Juwan Morgan your senior year. Yes. Is that is that voted on by the team? Yes, yeah, that was a team vote, so that's pretty cool. I think it goes yeah. with just being the oldest guy in the room, but also kind of <laughs> what I was – kind of working my way up almost from a walk-on to be able to play, play in games, start some games, and then getting my hurt my senior year wasn't – wasn't necessarily fun, but yeah. um, just kind of being that voice or trying to be a voice for, for some guys or just taking guys, teaching them little things, even off to the side. I wasn't really much of a showboat leader, like yelling at guys, but like, hey, I mean, you're like, let's talk about this. Like, why, what, what's going on here? Like, what can we change? Like, you got to change something up. So it's like things like that, just being able to try to try to teach guys as much as I could. I mean, a lot of guys that are at that level know enough anyway, but just being around for as long as I was kind of picking up some things and trying to share it. Um, and you played with Romeo Langford, right? His freshman yes. year? Yes. Yeah. My, my, yeah. My, my senior year, his freshman year. So, I mean, yeah, the, the camps, the kids, they were all screaming for Romeo. That was always the joke that they were like, he, we would coach and they'd all want to be on Romeo's team, get Romeo's autograph. So it's like, we had an easy job. We didn't have to, we just had to coach our team and then just go hang out. They were bombarding Romeo. I'll tell you, brother, that guy was NBA his junior year of high school. Yeah. The way that he yeah. treated it. I mean, what was your experience with Romeo? I mean, he was good. He was a funny guy. He was fun to hang out with. Just yeah. like, he was always joking. But I mean, when it, when he was on the court, he's just, I mean, he's quick. He's athletic. He was tough to guard. I mean, you know, I wish I couldn't give him some more trouble because he was, you know, he was scared to go against me because because I tried so hard on defense. He didn't <laughs> want to be playing me one on one. They were just like on the wing when we'd be in practice, and then I'd fracture my back, and then I couldn't move the rest of the season. So I I couldn't give him much trouble. But that was a, that was a funny part. But uh, I mean, he was a good guy, and uh, obviously yeah. he's, he's doing well in the NBA now. I think I'll have a pretty good career, and he'll keep it going. But he was he was good to be around. I think somebody like that, you're kind of highly touted coming up through high school, playing Indiana, going to Indiana. There's so much pressure on you that you couldn't even you could be scoring 30 a game and not even live up to some of the hype that you that was put on you. So just to be an 18 year old kid and coming through like he did kind of handled it, like you said, pretty professionally, like even from the time he was a junior, junior in high school, like I think that's, that says a lot about him that he was able to handle all that pressure. Not, I mean, not one time did he see him in the news or messing up or saying anything wrong. Like he was just, he knew what he was doing. He's, he kept it together. <laughs> well, uh, the first time I saw him, was the regional game against Southport and it, it ended up being Joey's last high school game just because Romeo okay. dominated and uh yeah sort of a stoic guy you know like didn't didn't really react even when things were, yeah. were going nuts <laughs> I think that's that's the thing that kind of shook people was like does this have does this guy have any emotion <laughs> you know? yeah yeah he was very stoic like that but yeah I think that was something with him and kind of OG and Obi when I was playing with them that people right. just like they just had the straightest faces when they were playing didn't really seem to react very much they may want to scream what I was scream like one or two times but then when you're talking to them just in the locker room they're they're cool guys they're they're laughing they're joking so it's always just a different different feel I feel like people kind of I don't know you're obviously going to act different on the right. court so it's kind of like they separate those two the two worlds almost just to kind of keep it keep it serious keep it game time you know did you um do you have a chance to play professionally, Zach, if you wanted to? Um, I didn't really look much into it. I don't think I would have had much opportunity. And once I, I, I was talking to the Indiana coaches, kind of figuring out what I wanted to do after finishing up school. Uh, they were like, yeah, maybe you could look into it. But honestly, I was not physically, I, I did not play well enough my senior year probably to even explore that. I did, I think it was like one of our first games. I was, Stepped, up, stepped down on something, ended up like a tiny fracture in my back. They said it was a stress fracture, but I was trying to kind of play through it, but didn't really, didn't really do much for me. So it didn't, didn't feel great. 
it's it's doing better now though so no regrets but yeah it was something i was kind of like okay this is going to be the end i'm not really going to try to force anything and kind of let it end naturally the end of the college the end of the career so i'm 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 happy with it well and with the brotherhood that i have with joey you know i found out real real damn quick that i couldn't play Get, getting swatted, <laughs> getting swatted by him uh every bit that i could but you know i'm sort of at peace not that I ever wanted to be an athlete, but is part right. of you at peace not playing professionally because your brother got to be in the NBA and you sort of got the yeah. experience? Yeah, you know? I, th- I think so. I think it takes some time just to kind of accept what's going on because it is, like I said, like the very beginning, like I've been playing or for as long as I can remember, I've been around basketball. So it, I think it takes some time to kind of adjust. I would say my first year or two, like kind of figuring out what I'm what I'm doing, but um, got my job now kind of settling into my routine and kind of kind of finding my niche here and uh I think yeah I think it's something you have to be at peace with because you got no other option other than either be bitter or be at peace and you've got to work towards being at peace and then yeah having the experience to have my brother in the NBA and kind of be his shadow throughout some some of it uh, obviously gives me a, a tiny experience but nothing like be actually being in it but I think he he provided me with some insight that I mean kind of helps me be at peace with that so uh, is overall good experience. I'm happy with my time at IU and getting to move on from there. And it's still fun to talk about. Still, still a fun team to root for. So yeah. I'll, I'll always look back positively on that. Any ambitions to be a coach in the future or stay involved with the game? Um, I mean, I've, I've thought about it just briefly, like kind of what it would look like, but I, I don't think so. Um, who knows where the future will take me. But as of now, I'd say uh, probably a hard no kind of figure my <laughs> figure right. my way out the corporate world and see what we can do but i don't know who knows in the next five ten years what i'll be thinking but as for now i think i'm i'm good well i'm only mentioning this because we are you know getting older uh and the landscape has changed right do you hope that if you have children that they play down the line um i don't know i mean i think it'd be it'd be fun it'd be cool to kind of coach them up a little bit kind of have that experience but whatever regardless I mean I'd like for them to just have the experience of athletics whatever that is it doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be basketball but just anything to kind of be a part of a team I think you learn so much that carries over into your day-to-day life being a part of a team working hard towards achieving a goal I think that's just something uh, that you can learn a lot from so regardless of what it is just being a part of a team so it doesn't I mean it could be anything so um, for, for the best we'll wrap up uh with this what are some of the most impactful life lessons that you've taken away from being a basketball player man let's see that's a tough one impactful i mean i think something i always try to do is just out, be, be the hardest worker i think I don't know if I always was, but just at least looking like I'm trying the hardest, you know, getting out there diving. Uh, So just I think that's something that kind of you don't lose as you're getting older and progressing through whatever it is, basketball, your career, whatever. I think just being somebody that people can count on one, uh, work hard, trust to do the right thing, be be uh, have integrity in everything you're doing, because they've seen it while you're playing and they've seen it in the real world. So I think that's something that that carries over regardless of what you're learning it from I think just being somebody somebody can count on and yeah. you kind of learn that from a team like kind of finding your role finding what you're good at um, being able to do what you're good at well and continue that and kind of spread a little bit but still be a guy people can count on I think I don't know that was a tough one I'm trying to think oh. if there's anything else yeah that's a thought-provoking question <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> well hey man uh, I'll tell you uh because I thought about it today um you know, I've I've only been around 28 years. I haven't been around here for too long, but mm-hmm. the the two runs that Carmel basketball had, some of the coolest experiences of my life. And get, getting to wow. see you play, man, it um it, it's magical when you see people do something that they're supposed to do, and, and you're supposed yeah. you were supposed to be there. Um, yeah, and that's that's really cool that we got to experience it together, and um, it means the world that you included me in that whole thing man yeah that was awesome i mean that means a lot to to even hear you say that but i'll I'll be always be thinking about that time too because that was i mean just getting to play i think it was it was coach osborne that was telling me like not even me but kind of everybody like 
even if you get to college, you'll still never really have experiences like you do in high school basketball because you grow up playing together. They're some of your best friends. Like when you get to college, it's just, it's totally different. So like always having that time to look back on where we're all around, um, just being able to play with each other, but we're all living in the same city. Like it's just, and being able to play for your city, play for your school, play in front of your friends, family, everything like that. Like, it's just, it's, it's, it was an awesome experience. So, I mean, that means a lot to hear you say that. I appreciate that. And I'm glad you're, you're along, along with it because it was, it was awesome. Hell yeah, man. Uh, how can people uh, reach out to you and connect if they feel compelled? Oh uh, man, I'm not really active on the social media, but I, I think I'm Zach right. Roberts 15 on Instagram. So I've got about five pictures on there. No, you don't even have to follow me, but uh, if you want to message me, I'll try to answer every once in a while. I'll get on there occasionally, but that's pretty much it. Find me on LinkedIn. All right, brother. <laughs> get, get in the professional link. Ready yeah, to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm also not on there very often. So if you want me, just the problem, message me on Instagram. I don't know. <laughs> All right, uh, Zach, brother, thank you for being here. It's a joy to yeah, see you man, and uh, to talk about this stuff. It, I, I wish we could go back because yes. God, it was joyful. It really was. It was. Well, yeah, thanks for having me. It was awesome. Good talking to you. Good catching up. Always good reminiscing about the uh, days of Carmel, go hounds, <laughs> and I'll uh, talk to you later. All right, brother. Hey, to hear this again, you can check out my website, jbkonair.com. You can also get the show anywhere that you get your podcast by searching my initials, J-D-K-O-N-A-I-R. And until next time, have a great day and a better tomorrow.